Well, greetings everyone and welcome to another get together. Uh, this today marks the end of a silent retreat we had this weekend. So I hope all the participants that attended really enjoyed it and, and got a lot out of it. So coincidentally, the topic for today is how to recharge our life with the practice of silence. And the quote is, live quietly in the moment and see the beauty of all before you, Yogananda. When Jesus was teaching the disciples and, and the multitudes, he talked about with that when they pray, to enter their closet and shut the door and pray to the divine in secret and we'll all be rewarded. And again, I don't think everybody had closets and doors and things like that in those days, but he was referring to meditation and the fact that he taught all his disciples how to meditate. Today we're faced with, due to advances in technology, a very fast-paced life existence here on Earth right now. And I can remember back when the, the only telephones were landlines, and if you were really fortunate, you had a long extension on the receiver so you could walk into a different room and shut the door and have a private conversation with your friend. And we had uh, this big box in the living room that had a small screen on it. <laughs> and these little things they called red ears on top, which was basically these two metal rods that were an antenna to bring in the TV signals. And if you were lucky, you got it three channels. And the music, if you wanted to listen to on the radio, was AM. There was no FM radio at the time. And my parents bought their first house in Pennsylvania. It was, a, I think, a two-bedroom on a lot of land, had a lot of land around it. They paid $5,000 for it. <laughs> Things have really changed. And because of those changes, <clears throat> we're constantly being bombarded and sometimes reaching sensory overload. Due to the phones that are smart and all of us that sometimes aren't too smart and look at them all the time. Computers, um, you know, there's all the social media going on all the time. There's computer games. Um, I had a friend whose son went to college, I think it was Berkeley, and all he did was play computer games all night. And he eventually, obviously, failed all his classes and had to leave because he was so addicted to the games. All these things distract us from achieving silence. We all really need that moment or moments of silence to keep our mind from just going on and on and on and to gain some um, reflection and some peace. When we sit in silence, we're recharging our bodies and our minds. In the early years of Sunburst, we were very blessed because on the land, different pieces of property we had, there was um, there weren't, weren't TVs and there weren't radios and and even at the back ranch that we called Lemuria, there was no electricity. So the peace and quiet, especially in Lemuria, was almost overwhelming <laughs> sometimes. At the time, in the 70s, uh, Sunburst had uh, many natural food stores in Santa Barbara and Ventura. We had a bakery and we had a juice factory and, and we had a, 
two warehouses where we were a distributor for natural foods and organic produce. And we expanded into Los Angeles. Um, we procured a produce warehouse in Los Angeles because that's where we were shipping all of our organic produce from because there were no other warehouses around the country that had organic produce at the time. So we would air freight produce to natural food stores around the country. And uh, my good friend Jonathan and I had the assignment to head up that Los Angeles operation, which was a whole other story that I won't tell at the time right now. But in going down there, we were leaving the peace and quiet of the properties we were living on and living in a different apartments in Los Angeles. And it was a, an adjustment because of the noise and the constant chatter that goes on in a large city. But we were really lucky because we, a friend of ours, a, a lady that was in Sunburst, her dad owned a house in Hermosa Beach that he rented out, the duplex. And one side became available, and so we were able to get that, and it was literally right on the sand, except there was the strand. They call it the strand, but for those of you who don't know what that is, it's, it's this really wide sidewalk that goes, separates the sand from the beach homes, and it stretches from, I think, Redondo Beach all the way up to Santa Monica, I think. And it's a constant flow of people on this strand, either rollerblading or um, skateboarding or walking, talking, laughing, and it's all hours uh, every day. So in our search of, in this house, to trying to find some peace where we could meditate, um, the front bedroom was off limits because it was right overlooking the strand, which was really noisy. I took the small middle bedroom and Jonathan took the one in the back, which was actually the quietest one. But the problem was it was haunted. And he'll tell you stories about that. Um, but it was, um, it, was an, it was really an adjustment, learning how to meditate down there and block out the sounds of the city. Luckily, being near the beach, right on the beach, the waves really helped, listening to the sound of the waves and that rhythm that happens. And also being able to leave work after a grueling all-night job in the produce district and driving home and being able to walk out on the sand and just sit on the beach or go into the ocean and just recharge and relax. It was really a blessing that we, that we had that opportunity. But there are ways that we can all enjoy silence. Um, there's Obviously there's prayer. There's um, deep prayer that you can do. There's meditation. There's sitting in contemplation. And it's very important that we try to separate ourselves from all the distractions of, of this day and age. And what's recommended, Norm always, our, the founder Norm Paulson always recommended that we first thing in the morning get up and meditate before we start looking at our phones and getting involved in what's going on in the world. And Sitting in meditation or in prayer or in contemplation first thing in the morning as soon as you get up. It's so easy to prioritize your day and set goals for yourself and what you would like to receive or achieve um, that day. And Norm used to say, it only needs five minutes. If you, if you don't have time, just do five minutes. If you have more time, do longer. A wonderful thing is walking out in nature, experiencing the sounds and the vibration of Mother Earth. 
even though it's not silence, it's very soothing and energizes us and helps us prioritize our life. Obviously there's the beach with the rhythmic waves coming in. It's always wonderful to be at. There's the mountains. Even in Los Angeles, there's really incredible hiking trails that you can go on in Los Angeles and, and just get out of the city. When I was um, probably around 12, I had a, my best friend's dad was a, a minister at the local Lutheran church. And he was very, a very devout man. And he was probably, in all the churches I'd been in, probably one of the best ministers I've ever had a chance to be, to witness. And he didn't do any boilerplate sermons. Every Saturday, he would drive up into the mountains, and he would pray and contemplate, and he would put together his sermon. And I remember even as a youngster who sometimes had a hard time sitting still during the sermon, I was always mesmerized by so many of his talks. We can also attend silent retreats, which is always uh, eye-opening and, and helpful and establishes hopefully a new practice in our lives. And obviously meditation is a wonderful tool because practicing a meditation technique gives us the ability to slow our thoughts, slow our breath, and sit in a very peaceful, serene situation. The yogis, obviously, we've read so many t stories about yogis that have left their life in the different towns and have gone up into caves and meditated for years and years. And coming back, some enlightened, others much wiser and much more at peace. And it's because they were sitting in silence surrounded by Mother Nature, and only their own thoughts. When Norm was at Yogananda's when he was a young man, um, a brother showed up after Norm had been there for a while. His name was Donald Walters. And uh, he was later named Kriyananda once he took the vow of monkhood. There was another brother there called Bernard who was there when Norm showed up and Bernard was uh, instrumental in getting Norm <clears throat> situated at Yogananda's and teaching him the Hong Sa meditation technique so he could get started meditating before he received Kriya. And Bernard actually ended up being, uh, joining us at Sunburst um, years later. Really, really wonderful soul. So Kriyananda was a very um, scholarly person. Um, each of us reflects divine spirit's light in a different facet, in a different way. And his, his facet or his ability in this life was to just be able to comprehend and write amazing songs and he's got a huge list of books that he's written and he's no longer with us but but um, Yogananda recognized that he had the ability to just sit in different situations and take notes um, there weren't very sophisticated recording devices at the time and so he sat in on a lot of um, Yogananda's talks and conversations that he had with different people and took notes. And in one of his books, there was an experience he had that I'd like to share with everybody. <clears throat> he writes, my first visit to 29 Palms was for a weekend. We visited Yogananda at his place. Yogananda used to go out to 29 Palms to get, away, to get out of LA and to have some 
peace and, and quiet and be able to write. My first recreation of him, recre recreation of him was that occasion isn't so much of the things he said as of what he didn't say. I didn't know it at the time, but he placed great importance on silence. Disciples working around him were permitted to speak only when necessary. Silence, he said, is the altar of the spirit. Yogananda was seated out of doors by the garage, and Bernard and I were standing nearby. He asked Bernard to go into the house and fetch something. Suddenly, for the first time since my acceptance as a disciple, I found myself alone with my guru. It seemed an opportunity not to be missed, a chance to learn something, anything. He evidently didn't see it in the same light. He made no move to speak. Finally, I decided I'd better break the ice. <laughs> I had learned from Bernard how to commune inwardly with Ohm and the cosmic sound, which manifests itself to the yogi in deep meditation. Sir, I inquired, what does Om sound like? Yogananda gave a prolonged mmm. He then reverted comfortably to silence. To me, alas, his silence was anything but comfortable. How does one hear it? I persisted, though I already knew the technique. This time he didn't even bother to answer, but simply assumed the prescribed position, which is the yogi mudra, where you have your thumbs in your ears and you put your fingers gently on your eyes and so you're blocking out the sound and focusing the eyes. After holding it briefly, he returned his hands silently to his lap. Just imagine him sitting there like, like a little kid, asking his father, you know, this and that and this and that. <laughs> it's a good story. So the things that we can do to enable ourselves to have a deeper meditation, there's, there's some tricks, I guess you could call it. It's been written and studied that caffeine takes three to four hours to get out of the body. And what I've learned, and I'm sure most of you have experienced, is caffeine in its right place is a wonderful thing. But if you're trying to meditate and you've just had a big cup of coffee or strong caffeinated tea, it's really hard to slow the mind down because you're in a state of, you know, um, high energy. So before, meditate, before tr attempting to meditate, it's better to not have any caffeine, but like at least three hours before. It's also recommended that to wait at least an hour after a meal, because if you're trying to meditate on a full stomach, you're, your body's digesting and things are moving around, and it's really hard to find peace. But in thinking and meditating on the practicing silence, it's much more than just not talking. We have to silence the other five senses. And part of the meditation practice is to silence touch. We keep our hands either folded or on our thighs. To shut down taste, we <clears throat> keep our jaw and our mouth closed and if possible we put the tongue to the roof of the mouth. It's also best not to wear a strong perfume or cologne, especially if you're going to a group meditation, which I'm sure we've all experienced. Somebody walks in and like, whoa. So again, silencing the sense of smell. The sense of hearing, you can do the mudra, you can use earplugs if you're in a noisy situation. Or just by practicing the technique, the hearing just becomes less and less and more inward. 
And obviously closing the eyes and focusing the gaze out in front on the inner screen. And we just watch the thoughts flow by. And we practice our breath, regulating our breath, either to counting in a number or just watching our breath. And we witness that all of a sudden our body just starts feeling so much at peace. And the outer becomes more silent and the inner becomes more aware. And we begin discovering inner space and experiencing the wondrous things that exist in inner space. So with that, I'd like us to enter our silent period where we can practice meditation. <coughs> I'll start us off with a couple of ohms. <clears throat> Spirit, please sit with us in this moment of silence, allowing us to go within and feel you within us and all around us. Amen.
when I read that passage, that experience that Kriyananda had with Yogananda, I remembered a couple times that I experienced a similar thing with Norm, except I'm not a chatty person. So, but the first time was I was in charge of a piece of property out in Koyama. It was an apple orchard and I would come to town with my list of questions for Norm on how to you know, keep everybody in line <laughs> out there and, and grow the apples and have a spiritual life for everybody out there. And at the time, we had a, a building on Coda Street in Santa Barbara. There was an old ice cream factory that Norm fixed up, and it became the Sunburst office. And it had a small backyard, and more than once I would come into the office looking for Norm, and he would be sitting out on the back, in the backyard in a chair bare-chested, the early morning sun was coming up and he was just sitting there in silence. And I would go out and sit with him and after a while we would, he would get up and I would get up and we'd go into the, his office and talk about stuff. And the other time I remember was we got this property in 96 and all that was on it was a double wide trailer and that cows had been in and walking around in and a hundred year old redwood house that was I think two bedrooms or maybe three small bedrooms it was situated <clears throat> kind of between the office and the lodge. And the house was basically falling down and <clears throat> so we, Norm had the crew jack the house up and pour a new foundation and, and started enlarging the house a little bit, adding bathrooms and laundry facilities. And the whole front of the house was off because they were expanding and building a porch and because that was going to be our meditation room. And I remember coming up one day just walking around and I walked into the front of the red, by the front of the Redwood house and looked and there was Norm just sitting in a chair staring out towards Route 1. It was early evening, about four. And I went up there and sat next to him and after a while he said, it's just a miracle that we're sitting here today. He said, first of all, ranches don't go up for sale on this Route 1 very often. And here we sit, looking out at Route 1, that when I was a kid was a gravel road. It would take us hours to get from Lompoc, where I lived, into Santa Barbara. Silence is golden. And each of us should seek it however we can, whenever we can. And enjoy the inner peace. And hopefully be able to open up our inner senses to touch and taste and smell and hear and see the wondrous glory of our inner being, 
of the inner cosmos. To experience the divine moving through creation. Feeling it energizing the cells of our bodies. Healing us. Strengthening us. Helping us walk ever so closer to that glorious day where we gaze upon the Divine's face, the brilliance, and have that ability to penetrate that light and embrace the Divine with a bursting heart of love and gratitude for this life, for this rock called Earth that we live on, and all the wonder of, of Mother Nature. And in an instant, we are one with all, forever. Be still and know that I am God. In the solitude of my mind, I yearn to hear thy voice. Take away the dreams of earthly sounds that yet lurk in my memory. I want to hear thy quiet voice ever singing in the silence of my soul. Amen.
Guide me to the 